بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد. Following the Sunnah dot com presents the use of evidences by the people of Bidah. Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, who died in the year 728 Al Hijra, said, "This is how the people of Bidah are. They do not use evidence." whether it is narrated or an intellectual proofs, except after reflection, it is actually evidence against them and not for them. Taken from Majmu al-Fatawa. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also said, you will never find a muqtadi'ah, an innovator, except that he loves to hide the text, the proofs from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which oppose him. He hates those texts, and he hates to show them and their narrations. He also hates conveying them, and he hates the one who conveys the proofs. Just like some of the Salaf said, no one ever innovated a bidah except that the sweetness of hadith was snatched from his heart. Taken from Majmu al Fatawa. Ash-Shatabi, rahimahullah, who died in the year 790 al-Hijrah, said, Whoever investigates the paths of Ahlul Bidah in their use of evidence knows that it is not accurate because it is like a stream and does not stop at a barrier. Take it from Al-Disam. Ash-Shatabi, rahimahullah, also said, From rejection of the proofs, is that they reject the hadith which are not in agreement with their aims and schools of thought. They claim that these ahadith oppose the intellect, so it is obligatory to reject them. Like how they reject the hadith of the punishment of the grave, the bridge of the hellfire, the scale for weighing good deeds and bad deeds, seeing Allah in the hereafter. Likewise the hadith of the fly, and that in one of its wings is a disease and a cure in the other, and other similar authentic hadith. Also perhaps they dispraise a narrator from the companions, and the successors, or a narrator who the scholars are in agreement with his trustworthiness. Ash-Shatibir Allah continues, saying, Perhaps they reject the fatawa of the scholars and dispraise it when the people, when the general people are listening, therefore pushing the ummah away from following the sunnah and its people. They have decided that the statement of affirming the bridge over the hellfire, the scales on the day of judgment, and the lake are all opinions which are not understandable. A group of them hold the opinion of negating all khabar al-ahad, singular narrations of hadith, and limiting to what their intellects view as good in understanding the Qur'an. Those who perpetrate rejecting the sunnah have no rights. Taken from Kitab al-Ihtisam. Shamsuddin ibn Qayyim al-Jawziya, who died in the year 751 al-Hijrah, rahimahullah said, Indeed, these people who turn away from the revelation with their intellect commit four major evils. The first is their rejection of the texts, books of the prophets. The second is having evil assumptions of the revelation and that Allah made it negate the intellect. Third is their crime against the uncorrupted intellect. Fourth, is their making takfir, excommunicating, or declaring someone as a person of bidah, or being misguided for the one who opposes their principles, taken from Sawaiq al-Mursala. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah also said, You find that there are many people who do not like that the prophetic ahadith are proclaimed or presented and are widespread. They would stipulate in places where they would stand that the ahadith of the sifat, attributes of Allah, should not be read. 
Some of those who came later were tasked with destroying the books of Sunnah compiled about the Sifat, attributes of Allah, and they hid them and kept them away. It reached me about many of them that they would stand up and leave the gathering where a reading of Sayyid al-Bukhari would be completed and what it contains of Tawheed and a refutation of the Jahmiyyah. And they would allow attacking and defaming Muhammad bin Ismail. But that what is the sin of al-Bukhari when he conveyed what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said? taken from Sawaiq al-Mursala wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad